Congratulations. Graduations at the University of Liverpool. It's July, which can mean only one thing. Graduation. In this video, we take a closer look at some of the graduation ceremonies over the past 130 years. The early years. University College Liverpool. In the University of Liverpool's Special Collections and Archives, we are lucky to have a series of graduation photographs dating back to the late 1880s and very early days of University College Liverpool. One of the first female students was Elizabeth Beckett, who began her degree in 1887 and graduated the following year, age 17. This was unusual for the time, as most women started studying for their degrees at 19. She took many subjects including Greek, Latin, ancient history and psychology and comments from her professors show that she was an exceptional student who tended to overwork herself. She married James Kerr in 1889 and then later returned to her studies in 1903 whilst also having two children at home. Here we can see a Victoria University undergraduate examination paper from 1896 and we also have student theses from the fifth year architecture students in 1929. These records give us an idea of what the students had to complete in order to graduate from University College Liverpool in the early years and also later when we became the University of Liverpool. Victoria University Degree Day In Elizabeth Beckett's Order of Proceedings for Degree Day 1888, we can see that her degree was granted by the Victoria University, which consisted of Owens College Manchester, Yorkshire College Leeds and University College Liverpool. It wasn't until 1903 that we were granted a royal charter with the right to confer our own degrees and thus becoming the University of Liverpool. In fact, on the outside of the Victoria building, which was designed by Alfred Waterhouse, we have two crests sculpted in terracotta one representing the Victoria University and the other representing University College Liverpool. The Victoria University crest combines the emblems for each of the three colleges, whereas the other crest is what is now recognisable as the University of Liverpool crest. Elizabeth's graduation in 1888 was held in Owens College Manchester, which was also designed by Alfred Waterhouse. You can see a striking similarity in both buildings' designs, especially the Gothic towers and stained glass windows. But when Elizabeth graduated, the Victoria building was only at the planning stage. She would have spent most of her studies in Liverpool in the old converted asylum building, and so her graduation would have been in a much grander college building than she was used to. When she graduated with her second degree in 1904, however, she would have studied in Waterhouse's iconic Victoria building, had her degree ceremony in Liverpool St George's Hall and would be a graduate of the University of Liverpool. Out of the 56 graduates listed from the three colleges in 1888, only five came from University College Liverpool and four of these were women. Elizabeth Beckett, Jessie Old, Sarah Birch and Elizabeth Jane Owens. The ceremony programme is relatively short in comparison to later years, with a formal procession of the university officials entering the hall, followed by the 56 graduates receiving their degrees in alphabetical order. In comparison, for July 2022, at the University of Liverpool, 5,387 will graduate during a week-long celebration and 13 ceremonies in the Philharmonic Hall. Elizabeth never went on to paid employment after her graduation, but remained a well-educated housewife, ensuring that her children went on to study at the University of Liverpool too. Her daughter also studied classics and Latin at the university, and became Lady President of the Guild from 1926 to 1927. Gowns, Gags and Graduations in the years following the Royal Charter, graduations took place in various locations including the Victoria Building, St George's Hall and the Philharmonic Hall. Smaller departmental degrees were held in the Victoria Building in what is now known as the Legate Theatre, which originally had seating for up to 500 people. For the larger ceremonies, St George's Hall and the Philharmonic Hall were used instead, and this year the University will use both the Philharmonic Hall and the newly built Tongue Auditorium in July 2022. Many of the items on a graduate's itinerary in 2022 were the same as the 1950s. 
get your graduation robes, have official photographs taken, and then go for a celebratory meal with friends and family in town. One memoir comes from a geography student who studied at the end of the 1940s and provides an idea of what her day was like. This memoir comes from Elizabeth Jean Folds. Graduation at the Philharmonic Hall was an occasion. Wonderful to have that authorisation to enter the carpeted dignity of Ravenscroft and Willis to be fitted with a gown. Women graduates wore their mortarboards. The men tucked theirs under their left arm. Consequently, there was always a chance of exchange with a male colleague if one's cap wouldn't balance or seem to come over one's ears. Afterwards, there was the usual photo sessions before repairing to the Cardoma in Bold Street with family and friends. The later ceremonies themselves also included a bit more humour than the very early days. Included in the conferment of degree records, we have numerous editions of gag programmes that were performed during the ceremony. It appears that certain graduates and honorary graduates were selected to be included in short, witty songs set to popular tunes. The songs would be performed by the students once a particular person had received their degree and was returning to their seat. The gags were a way for the students to honour their friends and fellow students, as well as other officials and dignitaries, and have something light-hearted at the ceremonies. Honorary graduates were also included in the gags, and in May 1928, Miss Emma Georgina Holt was honoured with the following song when she received her honorary Doctor of Laws at St George's Hall. Miss Holt was a benefactress and part of a family of women who has connections to the university over many years, and the Holt family wealth stemmed from their merchant and shipping businesses. Ava Melly, Emma Holt and Jane Brandeth Holt were all patrons of the university in its early years, and the trio used their privileged position to support study at the university, especially for women. Emma Holt provided a hall for the women students, and this was mentioned in both the student gag and the official address. It's unclear what year the gag ceased to be part of the graduation ceremonies, but records in the university archives start from around the 1920s and continue to around the 1940s. Degrees, dinners and distinguished guests. The conferment of honorary degrees has been a staple of graduation since 1903 and prompts the attending graduates at the ceremony to reflect upon what they can achieve in the not-so-distant future. Many distinguished figures, such as Winston Churchill, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, L.S. Lowry, Yoko Ono Lennon and David Olasoga have all received honorary degrees from the University of Liverpool over the years. While many graduates choose to celebrate with a dinner on Hope Street or Bold Street today, the honorary graduates usually attend something a little more grandiose. In 1950, after the honorary degree for Sir Henry Cohen, a six-course dinner was arranged at the Adelphi Hotel, and today we hold many honorary graduate dinners in the Victoria Gallery and Museum. We've also been part of the honorary degree nomination process. John Higgins is a Liverpool-born artist who found global success as a comic book artist and writer for 2000 AD, DC and Marvel, working on such diverse characters as Judge Dredd and Batman. In 2017, John worked with the University's Victoria Gallery and Museum on a retrospective exhibition of his work, and he was nominated for an honorary degree by the VG&M curatorial team who accompanied him on the day. Do Degree Day your way. Today, many students like to celebrate on campus with photographs inside and outside the VG&M, purchasing merchandise, attending departmental receptions and going out for dinner with family and friends. But not all students have attended their graduations, as one student from the late 1970s recalled. I didn't go to my graduation. I liked the idea of being a rebel and decided it was all too twee. I was making a stand against paying out the exorbitant £10 fee for the hire of the graduation gown. I think it's one of the things in my life I do regret. I popped in for the afternoon tea on the day of the ceremony and saw all my friends dressed up to the nines with their parents wearing hats and suits and I wish mine was there too, to shake hands with my professor and look proud. They told me afterwards... They would have liked to have gone, and it means there's no important looking photograph on the mantelpiece. This year, we hope that all of our graduates enjoy their celebrations in whichever way they choose, 
to mark all of their hard work and achievements. Congratulations to you all, and in the words of the graduates' leaving song from 1903, adieu. If you have any photographs of your graduation, the Victoria Gallery and Museum, or your celebrations that you would like to share with us, please email them to us at vgm.liverpool.ac.uk.